Good morning. I'm State Senator Ted Liu, and I want to first thank Los Angeles County Supervisor Don Kanabi for flying up here for this press conference. Supervisor Kanabi will be making introductions. Uh, before I introduce uh, Supervisor Kanabi, let me just set the stage for why we are here. Uh, we are announcing legislation to crack down on sex trafficking. And people think that this is something that happens in other countries and other places. It happens right here in California and LA County and other counties every day. Boys and girls as young as eight are sold into the sex trade slave, uh, sec, uh, in a sex trade, and their lifespan is about seven years. And we want to flip the paradigm now and go after those who buy the sex. The people who solicit the prostitutes who engage in the sex we want to flip the paradigm, go after them, and therefore decrease the economic incentive to do so. And if we can flip that paradigm, we think we can have a better job of cracking down on sex trafficking. I'll be introducing legislation jointly authored by the bipartisan legislators here behind me, and it will increase penalties, increase fines, and also provide additional funding for counseling for victims of sex crimes. I also want to uh, note that uh, recently, as you saw with the Super Bowl, you had all sorts of sex trafficking happen. And while that was a high profile story, it happens every day right here in California. And with that, let me uh, introduce uh, Los Angeles County Supervisor Don Kanabi, who will uh, discuss more about the problems in LA County and introduce the activ activists, victims, and legislators here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Liu. And uh, thank you to all of you for, for joining us today and to all of you out there. Uh, this is a horrific issue, and the senator just mentioned about the big story this last weekend with Super Bowl and 16 victims rescued, but literally right here in your own backyard within the last 12 hours, um, they arrested a gentleman who was trafficking a 14-year-old girl. And so it is a horrific crime, probably one of the ugliest that I've ever, ever been involved in. And this, uh, this issue was brought to my attention a couple years ago by Michelle Guyman, who's here with us today from our probation department. And like most people at the time, I thought that sex trafficking happened over there, beyond me, not here in the United States of America. The reality is that the sex trafficking, particularly for kids, is a huge and growing crime in counties across California uh, and in states and counties across our nation. As we saw last weekend, as the senator mentioned, the arrest of 16 forced into prop, you know, the prostitution issues as it related to the Super Bowl. They were actually selling packages, I guess, called party packages with young prostitutes and cocaine. We also know that gangs are getting into it because, frankly, it's easier to, and safer for them to sell these young girls than guns or drugs. And they can only sell a gun or a drug once. They can sell these young girls over and over and over as many times as six, eight, nine times a night, each and every night. And that's why this legislation that these folks are great partners in is going to focus on the demand side of this crime. And it's so important because in L.A. County, we worked hard to raise awareness uh, uh, in our region, throughout the five county area, throughout our state, and increase the services that we provide to these uh, true victims, not, not criminals, but true victims of this heinous crime. We've also established a dedicated courtroom in Los Angeles County to focus exclusively on cases related to sexual exploitation of children, a dedicated courtroom, which is the first of its kind in the nation. But the one area where we really need help, and that's why I came up here to be with these folks, is at the state level is on the side of the prosecution side. And that's why I'm so pleased to be here today with a bipartisan group of members of the state senate as well as the assembly who share the same goal of increasing the penalties for those who are guilty of this horrific crime. What happens now is absolutely outrageous. I'll give you a story. Just recently, a, a guy copped to plea to a uh, trafficking 12-year-old girl. By copying, he got five years, five years for peddling this young lady for night after night. And so, what happens now, as I mentioned, we basically arrest the prostitution, a 14-year-old girl who are being raped, and then letting the scumbags who buy and sell them off get off with a slap on the wrist. And that's what I feel is extremely wrong, and we must do something about it, as well as the Johns, as well as the purchasers, to make sure that they realize there's a very significant penalty for buying uh, these young ladies. And so fortunately, uh, as I mentioned, my colleagues up here at the state want to join us and make the penalty fit the crime. 
So I'm going to like, invite each of them to say a few words about their commitment on the issue. And first of all, please welcome State Senator Holly Mitchell. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, Holly Mitchell, 26th Senatorial District. I'm thrilled to uh, join in support of my home county of Los Angeles and with my colleagues here in the legislature to make a very clear, simple statement. Our children are simply not for sale. I'm a former member of the State Commission on the Status of Women, and we actually held hearings, um, Supervisor, about 10 years ago when this issue came to our attention. We held a hearing on the UCLA campus and had victims come and talk to us about their life experience. So the fact that it's continued to gain momentum, the fact that it's continued to spread throughout the state of Los Angeles, Sacramento County is a hub, Los Angeles County is a hub, the victims are, are younger and younger, young women who um, are in foster care and group homes are being targeted and victimized. Again, our children are not for sale. I'm very proud to be able to join with Senator Liu uh, as a joint author of his bill, and we'll be in introducing uh, my own bill today, again, really trying to empower law enforcement um, by uh, creating a wiretap statute to allow in the investigation of human trafficking cases, wiretaps to be used, again, to uh, give uh, law enforcement the tools they need to be effective in identifying these cases and prosecuting them um, as quickly as possible. Um, it's my honor to introduce the minority leader uh, of the state senator of the state senate, representing the 29th Senate District, Senator Bob Huff. Thanks, Senator Mitchell. Um, I'm one of those that felt that. Uh, human trafficking was something that happened elsewhere, and uh, certainly being a part of the East Los Angeles County, I've come to realize it knows no boundaries. It is everywhere. But as legislators, we are tasked with dealing with issues like this, and the solutions that have been in place before are no solutions at all. Earlier this week, law enforcement officers found a 14-year-old Sacramento area teen, which was referenced before. The FBI Child Exploitation Task Force had been searching for her since January. The 29-year-old man she was traveling with on a Sacramento light rail train was arrested for sex trafficking of a minor. Our kids are at risk because the demand for sex acts with children drives the market for their exploitation. The only way to save our kids is to address the demand problem. We can start by addressing the culture of tolerance that allows buyers of sex with children to go home to their families while the children they exploited are shattered and denied justice. The Protected Innocence Challenge Report gives our state a failing grade because the current penalties for solicitation of a minor are not making a dent in sex trafficking crimes. Most Johns are charged with misdemeanors and then released, a mere slap on the wrist. This is a $32 billion a year industry. Most women involved in prostitution over the age of 18 started out as victims of sex trafficking as little girls. No girl plans to spend her life this way. We stand together to put buyers on notice. If you dare to solicit a minor for any sex act, you will face greater penalties. Mistake of age is no excuse. We are committed to giving prosecutors more tools that will help bring a greater measure of justice to innocent victims of sexual slavery. Next up is Senator Marty Block representing the San Diego area. Thank you, Senator Huff, and I want to thank Senator Liu for pulling this together and, and Supervisor Kanabi for coming here on this important topic. Uh, I'm Marty Block. I represent San Diego, the 39th Senate District, and I have two bills on the topic currently working their way through the legislature. First is SB 473. SB 473 sits in the Assembly right now. Um, it, is, it is a bill that will make human trafficking a gang, tr a gang crime. Right now there are, I think, 32 crimes that are part of the STEP Act. They allow enhanced enforcement, better enforcement methods, and enhanced penalties for crimes related to gangs. As we know, gangs have now taken up human trafficking for reasons previously stated. It is so profitable, they've taken this up as a prime source of revenue for the gangs. So this needs to be treated like a gang crime. Punishments need to be the same as gang punishments for robbery, narcotic sale, etc. That's SB 473. The other bill, SB 939, recently introduced, uh, or will be introduced shortly, it is, it makes um, prosecution, it, it simplifies prosecution of folks for human trafficking. For example, as was said earlier, human traffickers often are very transient. They will traffic a, a young girl 
in San Diego this week, in LA next week, then in San Francisco, then in Sacramento. Now, if in fact they're being prosecuted for crimes in various jurisdictions, presently they have to have separate trials of each count in the jurisdiction where it occurred. This is costly to the courts, and much more importantly, this is terribly traumatic for the victims who must testify with, their, with the, their, those who enslave them in the room in several locations. What Bill SB 939 does is with the consent of district attorneys from the various uh, locations where uh, these crimes may have occurred, it allows court to join offenses. So there can be one trial for offenses that occur in multiple jurisdictions in California. Again, saving the court money and most importantly, saving the victim from the additional trauma. Um, with that, I would like to introduce my colleague from uh, San Mateo, the great Senator Jerry Hill. Thank you, Marty, and uh, thank you, Senator Liu and uh, Supervisor Kanabi, for your leadership that has kind of carried this forward. As, as you can hear, this bipartisan effort is not just in San Diego. It's not just in Los Angeles. It's in the Valley. It's in San Francisco. I represent San Francisco International Airport, a hub for the trafficking. The hotels around the airport, the hotels in San Francisco, there is not one place, not one location in California that's immune from this problem and the tragedy that it presents. So it's a pleasure to be part of this. And this is not something that, that we can take lightly. And it's not something that I believe Californians are not in support of, because they are. As we could see in 2012 with Proposition 35, that passed with over 80 percent voter approval. We can see that the public supports what we're doing here today, but more needs to be done. You know, I look forward to supporting this comprehensive legislation and adding my piece to that little puzzle and to that solution. Because increasing fines and penalties for Johns, and hopefully we can fund the rehabilitation programs that for the victims and education, and, the, and to try to bring them out of that struggle that they face. And also we can fund some programs for the Johns so that they can learn, be taught, and shown that this is not a way to act in this society. We want to provide additional resources for, it, for law enforcement as well. So data suggests that far more female victims, as we know, are arrested compared to the men that purchase sex. We need to change that, and working together in this bipartisan way, we'll be able to do that for California. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a great assembly member, Susan Eggman. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Susan Eggman, and I represent uh, Assembly District 13 in Stockton, California, San Joaquin County. And I'm proud to stand up here with this bipartisan effort to address this serious issue. Um, before I came to the assembly, I'm a, I'm a social worker by training, and I've worked with young women who have um, who have spent a lot of time on the streets, um, oftentimes resulting in serious substance abuse, uh, destructive relationships. Um, and I can tell you that the damage on, on a, a woman's soul that begins as a young child who is trafficked uh, is something that is not easily uh, to get over. Um, and so that's why I stand here today. Uh, in San Joaquin County, we think about these happening in Los Angeles, San Francisco, but in the Central Valley, there is a ring that goes from Sacramento to Stockton to Bakersfield to Las Vegas and back up again that traffics these young girls, many of them undocumented young Latinas. It is not enough for us to be arresting young girls. That, that is not the solution to this issue. We must, we must, we must uh, increase the penalties on the Johns uh, to cut this off on the demand side and make sure there are resources for these young women to be able to, to leave this life. Um, we are better than this. As everyone has stood up here and said, we are better than this, California. Uh, and it's time for us to really to take a very hard stand. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Armour. Um, there was a young lady that came into my office, a uh, pretty aggressive young lady, uh, as I remember about this thing called Proposition 35. Uh, and uh, Daphne Fung, who was the founder of California Against Slavery, and we worked with Daphne on the 2012 Case Act, which increased prison terms for human traffickers and required convicted traffickers to uh, register as sex offenders. Uh, and as we all know, Daphne hasn't stopped there. And, 
uh, in her fight for these victims. So, Daphne, you want to share a few words with us, please? Hi, I'm Daphne Fong from California Against Slavery. We co-sponsored Prop 35, which became the most popular initiative in the history of the state, garnering 81.3% uh, voter approval. Prop 35 was, more, was about protecting victims from the traffickers. Well, now what we want to do is protect the victims from the buyers. In between 2003 and 2012, California had, had 124,000 arrests for prostitution. 4,300 of those were children. 29,000 of those were 19, 18 and 19 year olds. Among those arrested were two girls who were nine years old or younger in Los Angeles and San Diego counties. Now, if these girls, if these little ki girls were arrested for prostitution in any other foreign country, we would have responded with outrage. Mm -hmm. However, these, t these two girls and their stories never made it to the news, not even a mention in 2003. And we're talking about here in California. There was no talk show discussing how eight and nine year old girls can be arrested for prostitution. There were no talk about who, who these sociopaths were who were selling these girls, nor were there any discussion about the equally despicable pedophiles who were buying these eight and nine year old children. The sex industry is it's about supply and demand. And until we tackle the money and the people who are providing the money for this industry, we will continue to fight the uphill battle to protect our children, to protect the vulnerable um, from it. But the good news that we have today is that buyers can be deterrable according to studies that have been done over the last 10 years. It is possible to deter buyers unlike those who are exploited or prostituted. So we, I thank you for everyone and all the senators and Supervisor Kanabi for your support in our new endeavor of focusing our energy and our effort on protecting our victims against the buyers. And do you want me to? Oh, you, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Daphne. Thank you for your ongoing fight and raising awareness with all of us. This next young lady uh, is Nola Brantley. Um, Nola, I've met on and off at various events. Uh, she's the executive director and co-founder of Missy, which is based in Alameda County. They provide comprehensive services to sexually exploited youth. A survivor herself, Nola has helped train thousands of our county workers in Los Angeles County to help identify and support these at-risk young ladies, and to, as well as to provide services uh, to survivors. And, uh, you know, it's just like the dedicated courtroom, and that was a first, and Nola's involvement, and Michelle and everyone else making that happen, to have all the wraparound services in one courtroom, instead of sending these victims from one courtroom to another, uh, in the protection, uh, and up and including housing. So, Nola, you want to share a few words with us, please? Thank you. First of all, I want to say that I'm so proud of all the individuals standing behind me, especially the legislators and, of course, my colleague Daphne, because this is really um, revolutionary to me as a survivor. It took me really engaging in the work to understand I was a survivor or even to be able to identify what had happened to me because at the time that I was victimized, we weren't talking about this. So I'm just so proud of all the individuals behind me. You know, in order to respond to this epidemic of child sex trafficking happening across the state of California and across the nation, we have to focus on three things. Those three things are protection, which are services for the individuals that are victimized. We have to focus on prevention, which is raising awareness, education, and training. And we have to focus on prosecution, which is what we're here talking about today, holding the individuals, holding the individuals accountable, fully accountable, who are committing these horrific crimes against these very innocent children. Missy's mission is to provide comprehensive services and work for systemic change for commercially sexually exploited children. And since 2007, we've provided services to over 1,000 child victims in the city of Oakland who have been victimized by the commercial sex industry. We've also had the opportunity of training over 15,000 people across the state and nation. Child sex trafficking victims represent some of the most vulnerable and desperate children in our country. 
They are children that have already experienced previous abuse, especially sexual abuse, children that are struggling with extreme poverty, especially homelessness, and children without even one single appropriate adult to stand up for them and to protect them, making them very seductive to both the violent and seductive tactics of child sex traffickers. We must protect the children of California and free them from child sex trafficking by holding their perpetrators fully accountable for these crimes that they perpetrate against these children. Perpetrators both selling these girls and making a huge profit off of these girls all need to be held accountable. These girls are experiencing unimaginable acts at both the hands of the buyers and the, and, and the sellers, unimaginable acts. I work with these girls and see these girls on my organization every day. We have a drop-in center where we have victims that come in every day. And trust me, the things that they are experiencing are unmentionable. They're equivalent to what people are experiencing in, 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 um, in areas of torture and war. They are really experiencing horrific violence and crimes against them, and we must protect them. These children deserve our protection. These children are crying out for our help and we must protect them across the state of California by holding the perpetrators of these crimes accountable and by not criminalizing these children, but providing for their protection and their services. So I hope everyone that can hear me will join us in this effort and support these legislators standing behind me because they are standing up for something that is critical. Thank you. Nola, thank you for all that you do and your passion on this subject and being a survivor herself. And the horrific things that these young girls go through, as she mentioned, I mean, you can't even conceive, but up to including watching one of their colleagues die at the hands of a pimp because they threatened to leave the system. Uh, so, I mean, these things are horrific. And I, I just thank all these folks behind me for being here today and particularly the support of my state colleagues on this, this issue. I don't think in all my years in government that I have seen an issue that is so horrific happening right here in the streets across California, other small states and nation. Uh, I look forward to working with these folks back here to protect our most vulnerable, focus on the true victims and the wraparound services, and bring justice to those who need to be brought to justice. And I think together we will say no more, not in our streets, not to our young girls. Senator Lou, thank you very much. Let me thank Supervisor Kanabi, uh, their advocates, and also the bipartisan legislators behind me. We're here to answer any questions that anyone might have. We'll also stay around afterwards for individual questions. Any questions at all? Senator. Yes, sir. Um, I'm sorry, forgive my ignorance, but um, in California, uh, well, I know in other states, a lot of states have been passing uh, laws of late to decriminalize uh, underage girls who are arrested and not charge them as prostitutes. What's California's status with that? So what we're trying to do is to change the paradigm. One of the problems that prosecutors have is when they uh, try to charge um, a prostitution crime and they know their victim is underage, the victim won't admit to that because the victim believes that they might get way more punished if they admit to that fact. So as a result, the buyer of sex gets off with simply a prostitution crime, which is much lower than if they have been charged with statutory rape. So our legislation will try to fix that problem and give prosecutors much more tools to actually charge the crime for what it is, which is rape. Yes, sir. Well, I understand no group is immune to this, but what has been the Latina, the young Latina experience? Somebody mentioned Latinos, if anybody could talk about that, about maybe some of the uh, kids being brought into this country and being held against their will. Is that what happens, or how does sure. that Does anyone out? have an answer to that? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> Someone? I had the opportunity to participate with another member of the L.A. County Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, uh, uh, in a rally um, in, in South Los Angeles County. And there were uh, young, the, the mayor of Compton, a uh, young Latina mayor of a neighboring city who I'm blanking on right now, and shared horrific statistics about young immigrant Latinas, as well as young Latinas who are in street gangs or whose partners are in street gangs, and they are being perceived as a new commodity. So it's not just the immigrant community, but also young Latinas who are native born, um, who are in involved with young men who, who are in gangs. Um, also young women who 
we talked about the homeless population and the foster care population. So when you think about the disproportionate number of young Latina and African American girls in our foster care system, in our group homes, um, who are being targeted for all the reasons that were mentioned in terms of their lack of connection to a family or to uh, one adult who stands up as their advocates. So I think the communities of color um, are, are being traffic, trafficked and identified through those venues. Anything to add? Yeah, I, I agree with everything that was said. I would just add that I think, you know, a lot of the children that we're seeing now are children that are showing up through our major public systems, through our foster care system, as well as our juvenile um, probation system. I think many of the children that are coming from other countries that are being trafficked, we, we haven't even begun to crack that egg open, so to speak. And so there's a lot of work, you know, for us to do. I also think there's an issue of the communities and the relationship they have with the traffickers. Sometimes because of the conditions in the countries they're coming from, the traffickers are seen as, as, as a hero in the community because they've helped so many people. And so there's a, a, a huge resistance to provide information about who may be trafficking individuals into that community. So there's a lot of other complexities that we need to address and we really need to partner with the Latino community and other communities to address those issues so that we're, we're addressing them from the inside out and not from the outside in. And just real briefly, I, I would add that, that a lot of this is, a, is an issue, as people have stated before, of poverty. Um, and people who are in very desperate situations uh, are, are easily victimized. There was a bust uh, in, my, in my city, Stockton, that uh, was part of a five-county investigation. Uh, and a, it was a, uh, a, a, a woman sat out in her front uh, on a blanket with her kids and kept watching these men go in and out of this house, in and out of this house, uh, and gone to a workshop about how you recognize this and was part of uh, really bringing to light that there was, it was just a, a stream, uh, again, going from Sacramento to Stockton to Bakersfield to Las Vegas of young undocumented Latinas. And so I think well, it, it, it is uh, uh, pervasive uh, more in, in, in with people who are uh, suffering uh, dire poverty. We don't, as people said, we don't even know, um, especially with the undocumented population, how, how pervasive it is because it's a hidden population. It's by definition, those are people who are under, undercover, which makes it much easier to traffic them in and out when people don't even know that they're missing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... Part of NOLA's work is this training process of being able to identify potential victims being used. One of the biggest avenues is public transportation. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did in Los Angeles County is with our metro system, bus system, whether Metrolink, which goes across county lines, the trafficking, they use as buses, they use trains, whatever the operation may be, because public transportation seems to be undercover. But with some training, we're able to recognize, we got billboards up now, we're doing all the kinds of things, treating these victims just like after 9-11, you sort of, if you see a bag on a seat in a train, you know, report it to someone. And so with numbers to call uh, for help like that, but again, as was mentioned, um, the foster care system, poverty, uh, domestic violence, uh, these, these young girls are just, you know, for the first time in their life, some scumbag says, you know, you're the most beautiful young lady I've ever seen in my life. I love you more than you've ever been loved before in your life. They've never heard those words. They've never been hugged, and then that would be the last time they were hugged because they truly become victims after that. And again, the undocumented population, again, that's a hidden cause. It's very difficult for us to ascertain, but as we get better at identifying, as these folks do their work and making the penalties tougher, uh, we're gonna get a better handle on this. I, I just think back to doing a fundraiser to help. We're trying to, to get yoga into the probation halls for these young girls and do some different things. And one of the, we we're trying to raise money for it. And while we we're there, I don't know if it was Michelle or one of your compadres was uh, paged. And right during that fundraiser, and this has been about a year or so ago, a 10 year old girl had just been arrested in downtown Los Angeles uh, as, as a prostitute, as a sex victim. So by trying to isolate these courtrooms, to isolate the program, wraparound service to protect them from the scumbag pimps uh, is what our job is. And I'm just thankful for all these folks behind me. And, they're on board and great partners, and it's not just an LA County issue or a state of California issue. We need to raise this to a national level. Thank you. We're gonna take one last question. It's been going on for a while, so go ahead. I was just wondering if you could go back over the, all the different bills. I know a number of you mentioned the bills that you're either introducing or are pending in one chamber or another. Could you go back over sure. how many bills we're talking about? Uh, so I'll be introducing legislation jointly authored by the legislators behind me uh, that will change the paradigm in how we 
go after sex trafficking. We're going to focus more on going after the, the buyers of sex, increasing penalties, increasing fines, and also providing funding for counseling for the victims of sex. And then um, I'll let Senator Marty Block and Senator Howie Mitchell talk about their bills. Thank you, Senator. SB 473, which is in the Assembly now, it's gone through the process already last year. It just needs to clear the Assembly. Um, it makes uh, sex trafficking a gang crime, so it's part of the STEP Act, so that it enhances um, methods of enforcement and also enhances penalties for, for trafficking if it's gang-related. The other bill I have, SB 939, which is just being introduced in the Senate, um, allows multiple jurisdictions if there are crimes in several cities, if you, as you've heard, traffickers move these young girls from one city, L.A., to San Diego, to Sacramento, to San Francisco. If there are crimes in multiple jurisdictions, it allows them with the agreement of the district attorney's office of the county. And by the way, San Diego, Orange, Riverside, and Alameda counties are all um, sponsors of this bill. They're all supporting the bill. They're district attorney's offices. Um, it allows a joint uh, prosecution of these crimes so that the victims only have to testify once about multiple crimes instead of having to, uh, on multiple occasions, confront their, their former, uh, the person who enslaved them. Uh, the other thing it does, of course, is save costs, and in our court system right now, that is also an important result we want to achieve. Again, Holly Mitchell, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I'll be introducing a package that really tries to focus on a variety of the areas that we need to target. Uh, one will be uh, focus on education. How do we empower young people to recognize the signs? The bill that will go across the desk today, so I don't have a number yet, uh, deals with wiretapping. In Penal Code Section 629, it lists specific offenses in which a wiretap can be authorized, and we're going to add human trafficking to that uh, enumerated list. Thank you, and we'll stay around for individual questions. Thank you again.